The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to AWCI's webinar. I am Anne-Marie Salvatelli, AWCI's Director of Education. Today's presentation is social media for AWCI members. Should you have a question at any time during today's broadcast, please submit it using the question box in your GoToWebinar dashboard. We will address questions um, at the end of the presentation. We also have a handout tab in your control panel, and you will see a PDF of the handouts for you to download. AWCI has extended its marketing and membership efforts into social media, and we're here to pass along what we've learned about the dynamic and engaging space. Today, we have Meredith Perez, who is responsible for all of AWCI's social media efforts here, to take us through some of the reasons why social media is an important marketing tool for companies, how to get started, and some tools that can make creating and promoting your content easier. We've put a poll together um, in the control panel. If everyone could just take a moment and we'll get started. So, and Meredith, I'll uh, send it over to you and I'm going to launch that poll. Thank you, Emery. Hi, everyone. It's really great to be here today. Um, our agenda for this presentation is really I'll do a very brief introduction to myself. We'll review a little bit why social media might matter to your business and to your marketing efforts. We can review some of the platforms that are available right now and, and some of their statistics. I've got some tips on how to get started, as well as how to grow your audience as you get going. Um, I've got two tools that we can review today and go over that I find really helpful. And then at the end, if there's any questions, then we can do a quick Q&A session. So first of all, I'm Meredith Perez. It's really great to be here, as I said, and I would just like to be 100% honest and say that I am a reluctant social media manager. Uh, I started 15 years ago my career with the Canadian Sheet Steel Building Institute as a marketing manager, and back then, you know, it started with placing magazine ads and attending trade shows. Um, eventually, it moved on to designing, redesigning an ancient website for CSFBI, you know, designing downloadable PDFs. And then eventually, I took on the juggernaut of what is social media for CSSBI. Um, so certainly, um, I see the value in social media, but I also see how much work that it actually takes. So it's not necessarily an activity to take on lightly and think that it's going to be a silver bullet for any of your marketing efforts. It's not the only thing anyone should be doing, but it is a useful tool to bring brand awareness to your company maybe help your customer service efforts, um, and really trying to meet your customers where they prefer to be met and to meet you. So while I do spend my time for AWCI managing their social media uh, channels, I'm also an alignment strategist for my own company, Purple Sector Strategy. So if anyone's curious to know what that might mean, please reach out. I'm happy to talk about Purple Sector Strategy. Um, anytime. But for today, we're in social media, so let's get started. And Meredith, I can share that poll with you if you'd like to see the results. Excellent, yes. So yeah, it looks like we've got almost just over half the group is very active, which is great to hear. Some are still sort of getting the ball rolling and, and going and the somewhat active. And then looks like everyone's doing some social media, which is fantastic. So that's great. I've got um, some high level information today. We can dive a bit deeper. And again, if you've got questions at the end, I'm happy to answer those questions. So um, yeah, let's, let's dive in. So last year, social media usage grew by an average of 13.5 users every single second. So to me, that kind of answers the question why social media matters. Um, really, there is that's where people are. <laughs> that's The numbers are there, the numbers bear out. 4.2 million active social media users in the world now. That has doubled in the last five years, which is amazing. People spend on average about two and a half hours uh, every day on social media. So if you want to find them, that's probably a good place to go looking. So um, in those 2.5 hours of people browsing social media, this is a good place for you to build your brand awareness develop those customer relationships, and even most platforms now have some kind of e-commerce or sales that you can make directly through the platforms. 
So these are some of the most uh, popular social platforms that exist out there. Um, obviously, new ones are coming out all the time, but um, I've chosen, I've sort of highlighted the five that AWCI is focused on. Um, I take care of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram for AWCI, and our YouTube channel is managed by our media arm. Uh, TikTok is definitely gathering steam. Um, and Pinterest, if you have a healthy library of high quality images, Pinterest can be um, a really great platform to use to, to get those images out into the world and to interact and engage with some customers. So I've got some basic stats on each of the platforms. Um, it's just to help you get a sense of who's using these platforms, what they're there for, um, that sort of thing. So Facebook is by far the largest platform that's there. They've got monthly active users approaching 3 billion people. That's, you know, a third of the world's population. Uh, slightly more are men than women that use it. However, in the US, uh, women age 25 to 34 are the most frequent users of Facebook. Um, so again, it's the most popular social media platform out there. People spend on average 20 hours per month browsing Facebook and 66% of those users use it uh, to sort of research and then visit local companies. So if you are a company that is focused in your local market, then Facebook is certainly a platform that can help you reach that customer base. Our next one is Twitter, and this one is obviously not as large as Facebook, but 22% of Americans have an account. Uh, by far, Twitter users are male, <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. Um, but they spend just over five hours a month browsing Twitter. Um, you can see about half of the people check their accounts daily, and then when you get up to monthly, it's almost 100% really of, of their users are checking Twitter every single month. LinkedIn, um, I, I'm sure most of you are familiar with LinkedIn. Um, this is really a, a job and career focused social media platform. 25% of US adults have an account, very popular with younger men, not so popular with older women over 55. I don't think that that's a shocking uh, statistic really. Um, but what I found interesting is that 77 job applications are submitted every second on LinkedIn. So um, certainly labor, uh, shortages, labor needs are very topical these days. Obviously, our industry is um, in need of finding good people to fill these um, positions that we have open at all levels of our companies. And so LinkedIn may be a tool that could be useful when trying to fill those positions and get job applications in for consideration. Um, people are mostly there to grow their professional networks and make those kinds of connections, but also 50 7 million companies have a page on LinkedIn. So it's a very good B2B um, type of social, me social media platform. So if that's really your focus, or if you're going after a specific target audience, LinkedIn can be quite useful for that. And then the last set of stats I have is on Instagram. So certainly Instagram has really taken off in the last five years. It's the fourth most popular uh, social media site now. Um, most users are on the younger side, but that doesn't mean um, it doesn't attract people from, from all over the world at all stages of life. Um, most, you can see there, more than half of US adults have an account and use the platform daily, which is amazing. And then if you are at all interested in video, certainly Instagram is an excellent platform for releasing those videos and promoting those videos um, with most users saying they watch videos frequently on, on Instagram. So we're gonna get into some tips of how to get started. A lot of you are already very active, so some of this might be um, information you already know, but it's always a good reminder, even for myself when I was putting this presentation together, I was uh, reminded about a few things that I needed maybe to be a little bit more intentional about. Um, so the first tip is to choose social media marketing goals to know what you're sort of working towards. Learn about your audience, know who your competition is and what they're doing on social media. Um, do a social media audit of your own channels to make sure you're sort of aligned to the goals that you've set. 
Um, if you want to go forward with a new account, then certainly you have to set up a new account. But if you've got existing profiles, it's making sure that those profiles are as complete as possible and updated. Um, certainly looking for inspiration on what to post uh, is, is a big part of social media. Creating content is also a big part of doing social media and creating a content calendar so you can sort of keep on top of, of all the, uh, the focus and activities that you are posting on social media. And then certainly evaluating and adjusting your strategy as necessary. Um, this is a key part. Social media is changing constantly, so we constantly need to be evaluating and adjusting as necessary. So our first tip, if we want to dive a little bit deeper, choosing those goals. Th these are just some example goals um, that you could use as a starting point. But really, you want to measure your success and certainly the return on investment that you're making in social media. Um, so you might want to track different goals for different networks or even have a different use for each network. There's lots of, um, lots of options out there. For example, you might want to use LinkedIn to drive traffic to your website. So you'd be tracking clicks from LinkedIn to your website. Uh, if you want to increase brand awareness, you might use Instagram to do that and track the number of times your stories were viewed. And if you're advertising on Facebook, you'd be looking at that cost per click kind of metric just to make sure that um, you're being successful with the money that you're spending on that platform. So really, and really, the ultimate thing is that your social media goals should roll up into your greater marketing goals as well. They should be connected, not completely separate um, entities and on a different path. So certainly if we're diving into these platforms, we want to learn about our audience. You want to know who they are, some basics about them, how old they are, where they are, um, how much money they're spending. And this sort of depends on, on your goals for, for social media, as well as the type of business you have. You can imagine that a consumer-based business is much different than a B2B kind of business, um, but it's still helpful to understand your audience. Ultimately, what you want to be doing is posting content that your audience is looking for, that they like, that they enjoy, that they want to comment on, that they want to share. That's what social, makes social media so powerful is that engagement uh, piece to it. It's not just about you posting content, it's about your audience um, engaging with that content. So a good place to start sometimes is to do sort of a SWOT analysis of your competition. So if you think about some of the companies you feel you are in direct competition with, either within your own industry or within, you know, in our, our um, AWCI context, maybe um, within different materials uh, kind of competition, you can look at the networks that they are on, you can look at how many followers they have currently, sort of see what you think is working well for them. What are they, what are you seeing is getting a lot of likes or a lot of shares that are on their channels? What maybe have they posted that really hasn't done a whole lot and then see what kind of content they're posting that really resonates with their audience if you have any similarities between your audiences you can sort of take some cues it's not to say you want to copy what they're doing but if there's um, a type of post or certain content that's really resonating with their audience and you have a similar audience then it does make sense to sort of take that idea and spin it for your own company's use All right, so as we saw from the post or from the poll, sorry, most of you are on social media already, which means you all likely have at least one account that you're working on right now or you have active. So a social media audit actually does uh, make a lot of sense to do. Um, we don't need to do these all the time, but probably once or twice a year would be um, a good sort of starting point um, just to make sure we know what's working, what's not working, who is engaging with you? Again, this is that audience piece. So really our audiences change over time. We gain more followers, maybe some of them end up in a space that we're, we were unfamiliar with at first and they're there for a specific reason. So this is your opportunity to really engage with them and find out who they are. Um, again, what is your competition doing? Just doing that com competitive analysis. Um, so your audit should give you a clear picture of what of the purpose of each of your social accounts. So if you don't have a clear purpose for one of your accounts, if you're not quite sure why you're using that account, it might not be worth keeping. That's something to note. Um, 
you you might want to make sure that the efforts you're putting into all of the channels that you're currently on are worth being there. You know, again, things change over time. Our businesses change, the platforms change, and our audiences change. So if you're putting a lot of effort into, let's say, a Facebook page, but you're not getting a whole lot out of it, it could be that your efforts would be better spent focusing more maybe on another platform altogether and just dropping Facebook or just, you know, doing less or scaling back. So these are all sort of things you can consider while you're doing an audit. Um, things you want to ask yourself is, is my audience here? If so, what are they using this platform for? And can I use this account to help achieve my goals? So again, going back to that number one piece on, on establishing those goals, if what you're currently doing on that channel isn't rolling up to a goal, then it's good to either reevaluate it and change it or maybe drop it all together. So if you're going to focus on a new account or a new platform, then certainly you have to set up um, a new account on there and there will be specific account um, requirements that they're looking for. Really the sort of baseline goal is to make sure you fill out all of the fields, include keywords that you think people, your audience will be using to search and find you. Um, use consistent logos and images for your branding so that your, your profiles across all your platforms are recognizable as as you. So if one, you know, is using maybe you've done a logo rebrand and you haven't updated your your social platform, maybe one or maybe all of them with that new logo, now's the time to do that. Um, you know, so that no matter where a customer or um, an audience is finding you on your website, on social, um, at a trade show, that all of their sort of visual cues are matching for them. Um, pro tip certainly is to use high quality uh, images. Uh, that's where a lot of, that's, that is very hard. It's very easy for me to say use a high quality image. I understand that, um, but that is pretty critical. So invest in um, either stock photography that allows you to show and, and grab attention with the visual or um, really invest in professional photography of your projects, um, your job sites, whatever it might be your products um, so that those really grab people's attention. At the bottom of this, this slide here are some links that give some helpful tips. So in the handout, those links should be active as well. Um, so if you do need um, sort of more step-by-step -step advice on each individual account, then certainly click on those links in the handout and uh, follow the steps that are laid out there. Finding inspiration. So a big part of social media is knowing what to post and having things to post and creating things to post. So inspiration can come from a lot of different places. Um, of course, you want your brand to be unique, but that doesn't mean you can't sort of get inspiration from someone else's um, social media or from someone else's um, sort of marketing space. Um, social media success stories, usually on every one of the platforms, if you go to Facebook's main page, they'll have a business section and they'll show you um, maybe case studies of accounts that they think are, are doing quite well in the social media game. So certainly that's a good place to start. Look at what they've got on offer and sort of, uh, you know, take inspiration from that, tweak them for your own purposes. There are awards for social media, so you can check out the winners of the Facebook Awards or the Shorty Awards. Um, these are all brands that are at the top of their game on social media, so um, that's a great place for inspiration as well. If you yourself personally are active on social media, look to your favorite brands and see what they're doing. Um, and then same thing, adapt them to your own applications. And then I, it might seem maybe both obvious and obscure, but ask your followers. So the people who are already connected to you, what do they want to see? What are they looking for? Um, is it technical content that they're looking for? Do they really need to dive into some details and they need to be pointed in the direction of where to find that? Um, are they there to just hear about the good things your company is doing and company culture things? Are they connected to your company, maybe through a family member who works there and they just sort of want to see what you guys are up to? You know, all those kinds of things, but ask your followers what they're looking for, um, because that's ultimately who you're there to serve with your social media. All right, 
uh, creating a content calendar. So um, really the key to a content calendar is that it is again tied to your social media goals. So by creating a calendar, it gives you a visual map of all of the types of posts you wanna create to make sure you're not sort of Sometimes we get caught up and we go down a rabbit hole and we end up posting a lot about one thing and sort of forgetting about other things. But if you create a calendar, you can balance things out and understand how and when you're posting and what you're posting and, and understand that sort of um, that mix of posts. So, for example, you might choose that you want 50 percent of your content to drive traffic back to your website. Twenty five might be curated from other sources. 20% uh, might be lead generation. If you've got a newsletter, you want to get people signing up to your newsletter um, or download a file if you've got uh, a technical document or an ebook or something like that. And then maybe the, that final 5% could be about your company culture. But if you make these kinds of um, you know, buckets of topics and, and types of posts, unless you have a calendar, you won't really understand uh, or it will be much more difficult to understand whether you're sort of overstuffing one of those buckets, you know, as you go through your, your months and your years. Um, so it'll help you just maintain that right mix that you establish based on the goals that you have. If you're really starting from scratch, there's a, a good sort of rule, the 80-20 rule. Um, on social media, people, I mean, certainly your audience understands that you're there to a degree to sell things, but they are there to be informed, to educate themselves, or even just to be entertained, you know, pass some time. Um, we're all, I'm sure anyone who has a social media account knows it's easy to be sucked into just sort of constant scrolling and mind numbing, um, you know, going through your feed. Uh, but so they don't want to be sold to all the time. So if you want to, if you don't have a more specific breakdown of your calendar and 80% 80, 80 to inform, educate, and entertain is a good start with 20% being really those sales pitches. Um, and then I have a little text here on the don't post too much or too little. This I'm going to say take with a grain of salt. Um, certainly you don't want to post too much. You'll end up sort of annoying people and they'll be like enough already. And too little makes people wonder if you're, you know, active, if you're actually doing this. These times are uh, a good start, but I think if you are getting started, if you're part of that 13% that are rarely active and you're, you want to get more active, certainly it's more about being consistent. So where you don't, what you don't want to have is a week where you have tons of posts and everything's gone out and then the next week it's crickets and you have said nothing. So if you, Again, look to your content calendar. You can try and space things out a little bit. If you're if you're still struggling to develop content or you have a bit of a lag, you're waiting for an event to happen, let's say, then just space things out a little bit more. If you have tons of content, then then that don't post or too much or too little, um, you know, the three to three to seven times on Instagram. That's a good sort of baseline if you've got tons of content that you want to get out there. But again, it's more about consistency than it is about um, you know, not posting enough, really. All right, and of course, as we start posting more, more on social media, the analytics kick in. We have a little bit more understanding about what kind of posts have resonated with our audience, um, what maybe fell a little flat or didn't get noticed. Maybe we start to learn what time of day or what day of the week is the best time that our audience is on on there, really. So these are that's, this is why you need to evaluate and adjust constantly, basically. Um, and spoiler alert, unfortunately, with social media, nothing is final. Everything's changing constantly, which is why social media can be so powerful, but also why it can be um, a massive undertaking um, from a marketing from a time sense. Um, nothing i've talked about is technically all that difficult it is but it is time consuming and, it, and you have to be intentional about it um, really all this means is that your social media documents your calendar your goals all of those things are more of a living document they're not done they're going to be updated 
Um, and the key is to sort of be intentional about evaluating your results and, and pivoting if necessary, and then communicating that to your team so that everyone on your team really understands the direction that you're moving in together and can work towards that together. All right, so I have a few things to say about growing your audience, um, whether you're really active or not so active on social media, growing your audience is ultimately the goal. We want to reach more people. We want more people to hear our message. Um, so here are sort of eight tips on how to do that. So um, first one and the most important one is follow other accounts. And I'm going to say wink, wink, like AWCI. I have links at the end of this presentation to all of our accounts. So um, really, the point about following other people is if you follow them, they very well may follow you back. And in doing so, that grows the spider web. That's what social media is about. It's about that spider web that grows out and touches more and more people and they're linked together. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. So um, having them follow you back might mean, you know, future posts could be reshared on their channel, you're reaching more people, and then those people um, end up following you as well. So, and it kind of works back and forth. That's why curating some content for your channels from other sources is actually very, um, is very helpful. Post at your right time. Um, so your audience is different than your competitor's audience potentially, or um, even someone else that's related to us in our industry. So you want to make sure you're reaching your audience when they're on that platform. Um, this is helped with a tool with with tools. This is not something you're you're not psychic. You're not just going to pull these times out of thin air and understand um, when when you should be posting. But as you see your stats come in, you should be able to garner clearer data on when you should be posting to get that highest engagement level. Um, and again, there are some tools that help, and I will talk about one soon. Tagging is critical. Uh, if you're working, if you're highlighting a project, let's say with a partner, you know, this is a perfect time to tag them. Add them onto that post, and then they're more, more likely, obviously, if they see it, they're more likely to share it with their audience as well. And again, it's about growing those connection points between channels. Um, Post a picture with your employees, tag them. Uh, they are social media users as well. And so you can tap into their networks as well. Um, yeah, get your employees involved whenever possible. Uh, have your staff members like and share the content. This is especially good on LinkedIn and makes is an easier, um, it's an easier leap for people to make on LinkedIn. You know, if, if a company puts a post and then an employee likes or shares that post, that's that's a logical step for most people. Sometimes with Instagram and Facebook and even Twitter accounts, if those are personal, it it's a harder bridge to, to, to build sometimes, but on LinkedIn, it, it works really easily. Um, contests are a good way of growing your audience. Um, you can ask people to like or comment or, you know, like your page, that sort of thing in order to be entered into the contest. Uh, comment to win or fill in the fill in the blank or a caption to win kind of contest gets people engaged with your posts. Obviously, they're going to want to follow you to see if they win. Um, photo contests are also really great on social because, again, this harkens back to that high quality uh, visuals, the images that you're trying to collect. So, you know, sort of see your audience as people who are out there who can do some of the legwork for you. You need pictures, hold a, a photo contest and then see um, what kind of images you get. And then you've got those images to use in your materials going forward. Uh, number six is visual with every post. This one I think is really critical. So visuals are what make your posts stand out, especially when you, it's pretty easy to sort of picture someone scrolling through their phone or through their feed on their computer. It's going to usually be that picture that, that grabs their attention. So, um, and there's statistics to back this up. So content with relevant images rack up 94% more views than content without images. And on Instagram photos, ones that show faces get 38% more likes than photos without faces. So if you're, if you're posting to your Instagram and you have an opportunity to show a picture that shows people in their faces, then, um, then statistically it's more likely that post will um, you know, get, get more likes and get more hearts. Video is 
and has been for a number of years becoming sort of that is the key that's the top um, sort of desire for social media platforms it's um, certainly for people starting out it's a big hurdle to get over it's not impossible it's but it is more work but it does get more reward so uh, if you can develop video content uh, certainly uh, drones have made this a little bit easier. I know most of you are probably thinking about construction sites a lot of the time and construction sites are very hard um, to get good visuals. You know, they're, um, you know, you're not going to just send somebody to a construction site just to take pictures, you know, so there's a lot of logistics that go along with that, but there are ways of doing it. Um, even and videos don't always have to be actual like taking video content of people moving around. Um, you can use some graphics. And again, I've got a tool coming up that I'm gonna show you that uh, can enable some video content to, to happen quite easily. So, so that's a good thing to keep in mind as you're growing. It doesn't have to be your starting point if you're just starting out or if you're growing, but it certainly can be a good place to sort of, a good goal to have um, and keep in mind and take opportunities when you can to, to create that, that video content. And then hashtags. I mean, hashtags have been around for a long time. Use current ones, use rele relevant ones, things, keywords you think people are searching for. Um, if you are attending event, an event, just you know, pay attention and see if they've created one for the event that you can use on your posts. Um, certainly that will help broaden, again, those parameters that people are searching and finding um, is really the, the key with hashtags. Um, it's all sort of about trends. So that's, um, I know a lot of content, we're about halfway through. I think we're gonna have some good time for questions, which I'm happy about. I hope that was helpful. Um, I think these next couple of slides, I think I hope will be helpful because um, this has really been the key to, I feel my own personal success in social media, which has been some of the tools that I have um, found and, and have been using for a long time. I just want to be crystal clear and say I get zero dollars from from including these tools in this presentation. Um, they are really honestly just tools that I use almost pretty much every day um, and have really come to appreciate how they help me maximize my time um, and manage uh, obviously multiple multiple channels. So those are Hootsuite and Canva are the two the two tools that I would highly recommend that are easy to get started with. There are others certainly. There are other um, Hootsuite is a social media manager tool, and there are uh, there are, are alternatives. Sorry. So um, you know, take a gander out out on the internet and find a social media tool that works for you. Certainly. There are other options, but uh, this is the one that, that I like. And Canva is uh, a graphics and visual kind of uh, platform. So let's dive in a little bit more into this. Uh, so Hootsuite, really the key to Hootsuite is that it helps you manage your content calendar. Again, going back to those tips, um, you can see your posts as they are laid out across a calendar of time. Um, and keep track of them. You can schedule posts, um, either post directly or schedule in advance, um, which is honestly from a social media management perspective, the key to the whole thing. Um, this means you can schedule posts when you have time to schedule them um, and schedule them for when your audience is going to see them, you know, at that, that most optimal time. But that doesn't mean, you know, if 8 p.m on a Tuesday is when your Instagram audience is most active. It doesn't mean you have to be posting at 8 p.m. on Tuesday. You can schedule that post at 7.30 a.m. Monday or the week before um, and, and have it go out. And so you don't have to sort of be on for posting at the exact right moment. You can use the scheduling tool to do that for you. Um, and honestly, unless you're going to have a dedicated hire on board to manage your social media, using a tool like Hootsuite is what makes getting started in social media and getting more consistent in your posting um, a lot more feasible. And then the other beauty is that it's collecting your analytics for you. So you can generate reports and compare your platforms, see when your engagement is, is highest, uh, see what kind of posts are performing the best. So it's all kind of in one space. You can have one browser window open, keep track of all your, your channels. So 
for example, this is what they call the streams. Um, so these are all of our posts. I can see what's gone out. Um, I can see what's got commented on that sort of thing. There's uh, a ton of other screens I can use um, like this one. So this is the planner, the content calendar. So I can see the, those posts that have already gone out and I can see the posts that were scheduled um, in advance. So, you know, we just, many of you, I hope, noticed that we just did our awards campaign for the Excellence in Construction Awards. So we featured a new project, a new winner every single day. There was 12 awards. So that was 12 business days of content. Um, and I was able to develop it and schedule it and have it all set to go out. So it literally wasn't me at 8 a.m. tweeting. Um, I had that scheduled uh, and ready to go. So that means you can be consistent. It means you can keep track of your posts and keep track of the engagement and the comments and all that sort of stuff that are coming in. Uh, this is an overview of, of just one of, you can formulate your reports in any way you want, but this is um, a way to keep track of the analytics and see, you know, are you gaining followers? Are you seeing increased engagement? Um, that sort of thing. So, so again, it's all built into the tool altogether. And then what I didn't have on my list, but I did want to highlight is this is the post builder. So the beauty part is, is that it, it lets you lay out your posts before you schedule it or post it live. You can, you can do that automatically as well. Um, but it lets you make sure everything looks the way it should. Uh, you know, it's interesting. The frustrating thing with, with social media is they all have their own little requirements. So Twitter has a char character count limit, so you can't exceed 280 ca characters. Uh, they've got image size requirements. Um, how they incorporate links varies, you know, links in Instagram don't really, aren't really a thing, but on Facebook and LinkedIn, certainly they are. Um, how you tag and even you can tag directly in here as well, um, can all be managed in this builder. So it really helps you to, to know that when you're putting a post together, it's going to look the best it possibly can for, you know, someone looking on their phone or someone looking um, on their desktop, that it's all going to come together nicely for you. All right, so that's Hootsuite. That's the social media manager. Canva is this um, lovely tool I found about two years ago that is all about graphics. This is all for visuals. Um, no, go please. I'm on. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a 10 year old learning from home. Um, so yes, this helps you do all your visuals. It's super user friendly. Honestly, the cost of it is negligible when you compare it certainly against um, any of like the Adobe uh, products. You've got templates that let you plug and play automatically with a whole library of stock photos, illustrations, animations, you name it, they've got it. Um, and then back to that whole resizing piece of, you know, Twitter is one size. Uh, Facebook is another, LinkedIn and Instagram are their own as well. Um, with a paid account, you can do this automated uh, resizing um, to make sure everything looks as best as it can for each of the platforms that you're working in. And of course, my mouse decides to quit on me. Okay, so here in Canva, for example, this is my dashboard. So there isn't a single day I'm not in Canva. I will, I will be completely honest. And either between doing work for AWCI or for Purple Sector, or even just personally, you can get um, you can get merchandise printed with whatever your design is. You want mugs, you want notebooks, t-shirts, the whole thing. So honestly, I'm in here every single day, and it has been um, one of the best tools I have ever found. Um, I still actually do have the Adobe Suite. I still have Photoshop and I have Illustrator. Um, I use Canva 99% of the time and I would argue that I can do, I can make things even better in Canva than I could do, than my skills would really allow in Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, I am by no means a graphic designer and certainly graphic designers are highly skilled in the Adobe products, um, but Canva lets you be a graphic designer without 
um, all that experience and and even quite frankly, maybe even skill um, that comes along with with making things look professional and clean and and just really, you know, attention grabbing on social media certainly. So here's just a quick collection of some of the posts we've put out recently. Um, I have made the three of these four in Canva. The exception is this uh, lovely post uh, that we did on Instagram when the team went out for lunch. And that will be my one caveat. These are beautiful graphics that I've created for our platforms, but also candid live kind of impromptu pictures of your team, of your people are just as valuable um, and certainly are as eye catching as any graphic you can actually make in a platform. And that's really the end of our presentation. So I wanted to put links to um, all of our platforms that we're on. Again, come follow us and we'll follow you back if we're not already following you, where we follow many of our members, but um, certainly uh, we, we could have missed, or if you've got a new channel that you're starting up, then by all means, please follow us and we'll follow you back. And thank you for your time today. I'll take any questions that we, we get and uh, thank you so much for, for being here today. And Meredith, we do have a few questions that came in, so if we can just um, have you hold on to help us get through these. Um, the first one, they are asking, if I was going to start with only one channel, what is the best channel to start with? That's a good question, and it does, I mean, the caveat is it sort of depends. Certainly from our stats, we saw that Facebook is the most popular uh, platform out there, and so that that's a very logical one. Um, I would argue, though, that LinkedIn um, would be, I think, my first start for any company. Um, if you're starting out for, on behalf of your company, creating a company page on LinkedIn um, and connecting with as many of your employees on LinkedIn as possible and having them follow your page is um, a bit of a no-brainer for me if you were only to have one, uh, certainly. And especially if you were in a, a B2B kind of um, environment, uh, business to business sales, or, you know, if you're actively going, you know, looking to architects or engineers, those professionals, um, a LinkedIn is, is where I would, would go to find them certainly as, as a first step. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, is there anything I should avoid talking about on social media? Another good question. And again, it kind of depends. Um, it depends on your audience. So if you know your audience really well, um, certainly you want to be talking about things that they care about, that they are interested in. Um, my general rule of thumb just for, um, you know, my own practice in social media is obviously to stay on the positive side. So I try to share positive stories and, and uplifting things. Um, and not, you know, we're not going to dive into politics or, or you know, there's a lot of hot button issues these days. It's it's a bit of a man, a minefield some sometimes. Uh, so yeah, my my general rule of thumb is if it stays positive, it's generally you know a, a good thing. And then you know if you want to get a little, if you want to push some boundaries, I would say be really cognizant of your audience and, and understand who your audience is and, and what their boundaries might be. Um, you know, a little cheekiness and, a, and some humor goes a long way as well. So it doesn't have to be plain or, or boring. Um, it's more just about knowing who you're, who you're going to, to reach with that post. Okay. And we have another one here, um, coming in from Mark. How about holiday posts? Should I promote my company's, uh, you know, 4th of July seems so self-serving and I worry about um, irritating my followers for the little benefit, right? So that whole give and take. That's a good question. And and yeah, there is a balancing balancing point. I will say this morning I scheduled our own AWCI 4th of July posts. So uh, you will see those on our channel. Um, yeah, and we, I think I think in general, trying to be judicious in in what you think is best, you know, we don't we don't highlight every single holiday on our calendar, for example. 
Um, so we try to choose the ones that maybe mean a little bit more. Um, it may also coincide, sometimes the beauty part of posting about, um, about a holiday is maybe just a gentle reminder that your offices might be closed or, or you know, your locations might be closed for that holiday. So you, you can kind of use it as, yes, you're wishing them, uh, you know, a happy 4th of July, but also reminding them that your phone lines won't be answered that day in case, you know, they need. So it, it's a bit of an information with a holiday greeting. Um, again, in general, I don't think that there's a huge, a huge issue. You, I, you know, if you're picking really specific holidays or, you know, these days we've got like, you know, National Donut Day and we've got a day for every, everything has a day and every day has multiple things. So it's more just about finding that balance, I think, with what your audience wants to see. Um, and from my own sort of personal point of view, I don't think, you know, if you chose not to do a 4th of July post, I don't think its absence would be noticed as as a negative thing either. So I yeah. I Thank hope you. that answers the question. <laughs> Have you seen construction companies use TikTok? If so, um, any success as far as a following or who they're reaching and the potential benefit? Yeah, um, to be perfectly honest, TikTok, I have I am not fully up to speed on on who's on TikTok, except for a general feeling that it is very much a younger audience. I, I do have nephews who are teenagers and they are on TikTok and they're creating their videos and, and getting, you know, my one nephew has like 75,000 views of one video. I don't even know what it's about, but um, so there is potential there. I have a feeling, my gut is telling me that TikTok is going to mature a little bit. Certainly its audience is going to mature. It's, it is, it does skew much younger than some, but um, it, it could be fun. It, it depends on the tone you want and the goal you have for that, for that channel. Um, you know, I, I think potentially if you had a consumer product that you could that you could showcase on TikTok, that might be a, a better um, a, a better strategy. But if you are more focused again on that B2B space, TikTok might not be um, a great use of your time. But that also sort of depends on how comfortable you are in video creation. If you've got some people on your team that are like on it and, and no video content and can create it without having to like, you know, stress and spend hours, then then it could very well be be worth it. Yeah. Okay. And um, Whitney was just sharing here that TikTok is good to use for promotions on site or fun little get togethers. Um, yeah. And I think that goes back to you saying, hey, you know, using those live, capturing those live moments of team, um, team togetherness yeah. certainly works. Um, and then what are your thoughts on the, any word content creator? Um, I got to the meeting late, so uh, this one apologizes if it's already been discussed. On, so is it a platform called Any Word? I'm, yeah, I'm I guess not... it's a Any Word is a content creator. I think is it's. Um, I'm I'm not familiar. Not with seen it. that. Yeah, no, I haven't. I will have to look it up. Okay. <laughs> Another one is how do I make sure I don't miss a comment or question that comes in through social media? That's a good question. Um, and so Hootsuite will help you with that. Uh, Hootsuite has um, one of the, on their main toolbar is when comments and questions come in. Um, and so that's where I monitor what we get from AWCI. Now, if you are using social media to be part of your customer service, um, offering. So if a lot of companies use Twitter, for example, to let people reach out to them for a customer service issue, they, I'm trying to 
tech companies will use it to, you know, I'm having a problem with, with this feature in your platform, you know, and that's how they will connect with customer service. Um, so if you're going to use it for customer service, then, then you will have to place obviously people who are responsible for monitoring those channels and being responsive, you know, very quickly. Um, if you are using social media for, you know, brand awareness and, and more like information, uh, disbursement sort of like, and, and member highlights like we do at AWCI, then, um, you know, I certainly check our comments multiple times a day, Monday to Friday, but we don't get any questions that are, you know, I need an answer in the next 30 seconds. And that's where more where customer service expectations lie. So if you're going to make social media part of your customer service goal, then you certainly will need to have people dedicated to monitoring those, those channels. Uh, constantly or whatever your hours of operation you know you're similar like a call call center you know if you if you're going to have people be able to call in and talk to someone between the hours of 8 a.m and 8 p.m then you know your your social media monitoring might need to be the same but hootsuite can be used to do that to, they would get notifications and you can set notifications in the platforms as well um, so that people are are told when there's something but yeah um, that just depending on the time sensitivity-ness of, of the questions or comments you're getting, you'll just have to decide how much of people's times you dedicate to being aware um, and answering those, those questions and comments. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I think we've got to all the uh, question. So we appreciate you extending your time there. Um, and, you know, take a look at that any word, uh, the content creator and let us know yeah. if there if that's um, what we should be incorporating. <laughs> okay. and we can get everyone back together. But I'd like yeah. to take a moment um, to thank our attendees for joining today's presentation. And thank you, Meredith, for sharing your time and expertise with us. Um, and to let everyone know that a recording of the webinar will be distributed uh, tomorrow afternoon. So thank you, everyone. Have a safety, uh, a safe afternoon and tomorrow. And then the weekend will be here for everyone to enjoy. Thank you. It was great, great to be here. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.